Hi everyone, this is our second part of our presentation. This is gonna be your second reading on Lieutenant Nunn, the memoir of a boss transvestite in the new world. And the woman we're looking at under below is Catalina de Irasso, the main focus of this memoir. So we saw chapter one where she was born. She was born in San Sebastian in, 18, in 1585. And four years later, she was placed in a covenant for nuns because her parents want her to grow up to be a nun. But one night she decided that this life, that life wasn't for her, so she ran away. And that night, the following night, she um, stayed with a man who ended up being her uncle. Um, she also was able to find work working as a page for the king in that area. But one night while she was working, her father actually came looking for her. And for the fact she was dressed like a man, he did not recognize that that was actually his daughter he was talking to, asking about his daughter. Um, but after this incident, uh, Catalina got spooked and decided that she had to go somewhere else. So the next chapter starts off with her, how she's going to get to uh, San Lucar. Um, she, she starts off the, the night um, stealing 500 pesos from her uncle, and then she escapes through the night. Um, while she was, while traveling, she found um, a man by the name of Captain Juan de Ibarra, who is a treasury agent for the country of Panama. Um, while, while she was done working for him, she spent most of the money she had earned from him and a lot of the money she's had from her uncle. So now she had no money, so she had to find more work. And that's when she um, met a Trujillo merchant by name of Juan de Urquiza. And they, tr they, they were gonna to travel together. Um, as they traveled together, they came across some bad weather and their ship actually capsized. And once they made land, they were in a place known as uh, Sanya. Uh, while she was at Sanya, she got into a conversation by the man of by a man by the name of Reyes, and he even threatened her to cut her face that that night. But she let it go, and they moved on. But uh, she held a grudge because she saw him the following night or the following day and uh, sliced his face, and she got this. She was obviously going to be in trouble in the law. So her master recommended that she married a woman by the name of Don Beatriz de Cardenas, who suffered to be Reyes's niece. And th this was just like a way to, you know, get out of trouble. You know, Reyes couldn't hurt one of his family members. But uh, Carolina did not like this plan, so she actually fed uh, Sanya for Trujillo. Um, once she arrived at Trujillo, she shut up shop there for a while. Um, but one day while she was working at the store, a man came in saying that there was armed men looking for her. And when she looked out, she recognized these men as Reyes's men. So they, both of the, both groups got into a little scuffle and one of Reyes's men ended up dying. Um, so as the local sheriff came, um, she was going to be charged with murder. So she wanted to avoid being arrested for what she just did. So she had to flee and she fled to Lima to avoid jail, but she got a letter of introduction from her master before she left. And this is gonna be a common theme throughout her story. Um, once she arrived to uh, Lima, she presented the letter of introduction to Diego de Solarde. Um, she worked for him for nine months, but her employment through him was short lived because she was fired because she messed with um, his sister-in-law. So while she was stuck in Lima, she had you know no job, no, no work, so she decided to join the military. Um, her master was against this idea, was even going to go pay for her. Um, she took some money from the military when you enlist, but he was even going to repay this money, but she refused that, refused because she, this is what she wanted to do. So this is going to be a map, and these are like general trade routes they took during the 16th century. Um, but we're mostly focusing on um, South America. And I just want to show you how far um, Catalina traveled throughout her, her um, story in these chapters. So up here is where Panama would be. Um, this is where Trujillo is at. This is Lima. And her rest of her travel is going to be told by Viviana, which is from Costa to Gua, Gua, uh, Guagmaga. Uh, so take it away, Viviana. So in chapters, Dear Vice to Conception, Chile found that her older brother was stationed there where she was, and she became his guard for three years. She later um, 
went back to her original post and spent another three years in Pukabai, by no, by Kabi, and she becomes a lieutenant after killing uh, a chief of the Indians. Um, do, and for that, she had the chance to go back to conception, live, live the, a quiet life until she had another altercation with a fellow lieutenant, which led, led her to kill him and went into hiding and waited until people started petitioning on her behalf. She then becomes friends with, uh, she becomes a second du on a duel that one of her friends had for another with another and I, but the consequences of her decision led her to be killed, uh, to kill her own brother without knowing it. So in chapter 17, in another occasion, Catalina goes to Lima with 900 other soldiers to fight off the Dutch armies. They lost almost significantly, only leaving her a friar and a soldier. They were captured by the Dutch for 26 uh, days and Catalina, thinking that she was going to be killed in any moment, she was shocked that she was later left at the coast of Paita. When she stay, when she was in Paita, she went walking to Lima, and while she was around Lima, she was accused of stealing a horse, but she found out a way to be set free. In chapter 18, she goes to Cusco and stays at a, front, at a house of the treasurer Lope del Cedo. And an, another incident happened where she went gambling and a guy named the Cid steals from her in front of her eyes. She fights him, leaving her wounded, but still be able to kill the Cid. She felt like that um, for all her wounds that she had that moment, she was gonna die at any moment. So she confessed that she was a girl to the father for the first time, but later, um, she heals miracles, miraculously and leaves Cusco out of fear of being killed by the friends of the Cid. In chapter 19, when Catalina arrives uh, at Apurimac Bridge, where she is met with the law, but incidentally, they were all friends of the Cid. So she has a fight with them. The people who were going to arrest her find out she has a gun, so they run away from her. So she, and by then she made it to the city of Guancabelica and stayed there for a couple of days. After arriving, she went to the Basas River where she encountered another three men who were ordered to arrest her, but they, not, they did not do it out of respect, which made her go to Juanma from there. She then met on another occasion, she met another sheriff, tries to talk to her who she was tells her that she was from Conception and finds out who she was. So she, he also tries to arrest her, but he at the end couldn't. The only thing that he did was um, confiscate her possessions and hide them until she realized no one was pursuing her. So when she goes somewhere else, she gets cornered by them, but was saved by the bishop at the last moment. And when the bishop asks, Saves her, tell, um, the, the bishop tells her to tell her her story and then she told, her, told him the truth about being a woman. So that was the second person she told. And then her story gets told everywhere. For chapter 21, after the bishop died, she went to Archbishop of Lima. She was treated well and was asked to choose a comment she would remain to remained in. She chose St. Bernard, stayed there for two years and five months until Spain came and told them that she was not a professional, so she had to leave. So in that moment, she uh, she chose to go back to Spain. And Tenerife, she was able to leave on a boat of the Armado General Tomas uh, Larrasburu to Spain, treated her well until she had made another altercation with another man. She was transferred to San Telmo to another boat, but she had there was complications of water entering inside the ship, and there was a huge deal traveling over ship to Spain. They made it to Cali, Spain, remained there for eight days, then found that the, um, where she was staying at, two of his brothers were at a com the command of the person that was letting her stay. So as an honor to her, two, 
her two brothers receive a promotion. So in chapter 23, she did more traveling to Seville and then Madrid, but they, she was hitting from the public eye on those cities because people were curious of the lieutenant who was a nun and was dressed as a man. Um, she then was arrested by the orders of Ricard, not, no reason why it was said, but she was set free by Count Olivares, worked for two months, went to Count, Count Javier from Pamplona, left Pamplona to Rome. She had also complications uh, on the way with other countries, uh, expo saying that she was a Spaniard, Spaniard spy, but when they didn't find any evidence, they told her to go back to Madrid, and if not, she was going to be hanged or roped to death. She went back to Madrid. She asked the king for a pension. She get, later got granted 800 pounds a year. And then on another, when she went to Lerida, Spain, Catalina and her companions were robbed at one point, lost everything except her papers. She continued the trip to Barcelona, naked, looking for help. She encountered the king miraculously and was able to receive aid from him and later traveled to San Martin. Uh, that was uh, Sicilian bound from Genoa. And then in chapter 25, she spent the Hino for 15 days before she traveled again to Rome. She, in, um, in her story, she encountered an Italian, she sparred with him, and then that made a spark with other people, sparring with other people between who was a, uh, was a better Spaniard between a Spaniard and an Italian. She was able to snack out of the fight, not knowing how it ended. But then she went to Rome, met the Pope, told her story. Her fame spread around abroad. The country, she was able to meet um, with other higher up people. The last moment she talked about is when she had a conversation with three cardinals and how she said um, they were treating, telling her that the only bad thing about, about her was Spain, Spain, being a Spaniard. And at the end, she said that was like the thing that she was more, most proud of. All right, thank you. thank you so much. Um, I hope you guys found this um, helpful.